thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for everything that Allah has given us, all of his bounties, all of his favors, anything and everything that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us, has blessed us with, we thank him. We send also the choices of salutations upon his final messenger, Muhammad ibn Abdullah, and his family, and his companions, and on all of those who follow in his footsteps until the final hour. Tonight, I'm going to speak about none other than our beloved Prophet Muhammad ibn Abdullah, sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he is a man that, who is no stranger to us. We have been hearing his name since childhood. We have been learning every aspect of the Prophet Wasallam's life. We learnt about his migration. We learnt about his birth. We learnt about his marriages. We learnt about his death. We learnt about his da'wah. We learnt every aspect. No man has been studied to that level as that of the beloved Prophet Muhammad it is this man about whom Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the Quran he, he tells us that he has sent him both as a Bashir and a Nadhir. A Bashir, a bringer of glad tidings, good news, and a Nadhir, a warning. It is this man about whom Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us in the Quran wa inna ala that verily you are on a very great level of akhlaq, a very great level of character. It is this man about whom Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us, لَقَدْ كَانَ لَكُمْ فِي رَسُولِ اللَّهِ أُسْوَةٌ حَسَنًا That verily in the messenger, verily for you, لَكُمْ فِي رَسُولِ اللَّهِ In the messenger of Allah, أُسْوَةٌ حَسَنًا is a perfect or an excellent role model. Today, brothers and sisters in Islam, I want to speak about, I want to focus on two aspects of the life of the Prophet ﷺ. Just two aspects which the Prophet ﷺ was able to maintain in a perfect way and take these two aspects and walk along with them. And it is two aspects that we need in our lives as well. So these two aspects are not unique, they're not specific to the Prophet ﷺ. They're not only his job, but two aspects that we need in our life, and these two aspects we need to learn how to balance them and walk on the path of motivation. What are these two aspects? On one hand, the Prophet ﷺ in the ayah which I mentioned earlier, is on the highest level of character. We know that from the ayah. And also the Prophet ﷺ himself, he told us in a hadith which is in Sahih Muslim, إِنَّمَا بُعِثْتُ لِأُتَمِّمَ مَكَارِمَ الْأَخْلَاقِ Verily, I have been sent to perfect good character. So on one hand, the Prophet ﷺ was on this highest level of character. On the other hand, the Prophet ﷺ was on the highest level of taqwa. The Prophet ﷺ, he feared Allah the most. He was on the highest level of worship to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Yet the Prophet ﷺ, and remember, he was a muallim, he was a teacher, he was the guide. Alright, he had to bring people to Islam. He had to convince people. He had to draw people's hearts towards Islam. So he took these two and he walked with them. And often, very often we see today that amongst ourselves, when people come onto the religion, perhaps they weren't religious before. Perhaps they weren't religious. They weren't following all the commandments of Allah. They weren't staying away from those things which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told them. Say when they come on the deen, unfortunately, a lot of the time it happens that they turn people away from the deen. Alright? They want that high level of taqwa, 
They want that high level of worship, but through their akhlaq and character they turn away. But the Prophet ﷺ was on that extreme level of taqwa, yet he had the best of akhlaq and character as well, so much so that it brought people towards him. What does Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tell us in the Quran? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us that walaw and he addresses the Prophet and he says, Walaw kunta fadhan khalif al qalbi lan fadhu min hawlik. That you, O Messenger, if you were vulgar in language, if you were harsh in language, if you were rude in language, khalif al qalb. And if your heart was hard, then fadlu min hawlik, all these people would have ran away from you. They would have gone away. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he had a mission. <laughs> and what a great mission. He was sent as the final messenger on this earth. Imagine that. SubhanAllah. We have missions, right? Or we have job descriptions when we go in for a job. Boss tells us you need to do this, you need, you've got three, four people under you, you need to control, you need to manage them. Well, this way, you know, if you're a teacher like myself, you need to go, you need to look after that class, that's your 30 kids, you need to make sure. And then we think, Ya Allah, what a big job, you know, 30 kids, now I need to make sure that they learn and they study and, and their marks are good, alright? People who are in work, you have something in your head. Here's a messenger of Allah, Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Khatimul Anbiya. The final messenger. He knows that there's no other messengers after him. And he's got the entire world. Allah tells him in the Quran that he's been sent Rahmatul Lil Alameen. That he's been sent as a mercer, as a mercy to the entire mankind, Alameen, the world. So he's got such a massive job on his head. Is that he has to call these people, take these people out of the darkness and bring them into the light. Take these people out of the worship of things other than Allah and bring them into the worship of Allah. Such a massive job the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam had. All right, yet he had to be on that highest level of character. He had to have that smile. You know, Subhanallah. Ask working people. Ask people. Mashallah, and when I look around, I can see that there are people like that, people who work and have families and have stuff to pay off and have. All right? And very often you'll see them, they're not smiling. Why? Why? Because humum, wa humum. They've got a lot of worries. They've got a lot of, you know, things on their head and they're, you know, they're worried and maybe the kids come around like, oh, not now, not now. You know, I'm too busy. I've got too much worry. Subhanallah, how much worry we've got? Maybe a house, a car, a small family, a little job. Okay? That's our worry. And here's the Prophet, alayhi salam, with the worry of the entire mankind, yet still he manages to keep that smile always. He manages to remain on that high quality of akhlaq. <clears throat> now I've, I've told you why the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa or I've told you that how the Prophet alayhi salam is on the highest level of character. What I didn't tell you is from the sunnah itself that how the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa was on the highest level of taqwa, of piety. All right? And this is a story and I love this story where three men, good intentioned men, companions of the Prophet ﷺ, they came to the house of the Prophet ﷺ, he was not there, and they went and they knocked and they spoke to his wives, whichever wife it was, or wives maybe, and they wanted to know about, you know, we see the Prophet outside, we see him in the mosque, we see him on the street, in the marketplace, but we want to know what happens in the house. Because not many people have that view of the Prophet salam, his daily life in the house. Okay? Who would it be? It would be his wives. Alright? Those people would be the most knowledgeable about how the Prophet salam, was in his own house. So they asked his wives, like, what's the routine of the Prophet salam? And his wives told them, this is what he does, he goes here, he wakes up at this time, he does this, he worships like this, he sleeps like this, he eats like this. And in the words of the Hadith, it says that it's as if these men were not that impressed. It's as if they were not impressed. And I thought like, oh, we thought it would be something more, wow, we thought it would be something more, you know? They looked at it and 
you know, it's, it's a little bit less. And then one of them said, but you know what, hang on, he is the messenger of Allah. Allah has forgiven all of his past and present and future sins. Alright, so maybe that's okay for him. So one of them said that I'm going to pray all night and I'm, I won't sleep. Because obviously his wife, the Prophet one of his wives, would have told him that he sleeps part of the night and he wakes up part of the night in worship. So one of the men, he said that I'm going to stay up for the entire night, I'm not going to sleep. The second man, he said, Inni la wa la I am going to fast every day and I'm not going to break my fast. That's it. I'm not going to leave a day where I don't fast. Every day I will fast. That's the second man. And the third man, he said, I'm going to stay away from women. That's it. I'm not going to marry because marriage is going to take me away from the worship of Allah. So I'm not going to marry. Alright. Then the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. When the news reached him of what these three men he said, said he said, "Wallahi inni la akhshakum lillah wa atqaakum la." That very he 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 made an oath by Allah, and he said, "Verily, I fear from you. I fear Allah the most. I am the most fearful of Allah from you, and I am on the highest level of taqwa." These are the words of the Prophet ﷺ himself. Wa an atqaakum. All right, that I am the most on that highest level. But the Prophet ﷺ said, لكني أصيم أصوم وأفطر. But I fast on some days and I don't fast on other days. وأصلي وأرقد. And I stand up in prayer in the night. In other parts I sleep. I don't stand up the full night in prayer. وأتزوج النساء. And I marry women. And we know the Prophet ﷺ. Had many wives, and that's a natural part, natural life cycle of a person, of a human being. And in fact, in another ayah in the Quran, Allah Subhanahu wa Taala, He said that for every prophet, He had given them partners and children. Okay, as wajan wa Right, every prophet that came had partners, wives, obviously, and children. Natural part of being a human being. So this is the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Again, on one hand, he is on the highest level of the taqwa, of piety, and on the other hand, on the other hand, he was the most fearful of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So here we have these two qualities. Now, how did the Prophet salam, take these two and walk with both these aspects in order to bring people towards Islam? Let's have a look at a few examples from the life of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam himself so, so that we can grasp and understand that. Again, this is something that I love. These little stories from the Prophet alayhi salam's life to show us what type of a person he is and so that we can take that as well. Oh, I, I love these small stories and this is a popular one. It's from Anas ibn Malik radiallahu anhu. And now I'm going to stop there with, the, with Anas ibn Malik. Because who was Anas ibn Malik? And I love his story as well. Anas bin Malik, he was a youngster when the Prophet ﷺ came to al Madinah. He was a youngster. And Anas bin Malik's mother, who was a widow, she gave Anas to the Prophet ﷺ as like, here, take him, he's going to look after you. He'll, he'll be like your servant. Whatever you need from him, he'll do it for you, everything like that. The Prophet ﷺ, he didn't take advantage of that in any way. So, okay, you know what? Make me this, make me what, give me water, do me this. No, nothing. What does Anas ibn Malik radiallahu an, after 10 years of being in the khidmah, in the service of the Prophet alayhi wa obviously he became his pupil as well. He was his student. He narrated a lot of hadith from the Prophet alayhi wa And this is to show us as well. He says about the Prophet alayhi wa sallam, قَدَمْتُ رَسُولَ اللَّهِ صَلَّى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمْ عَشْرَ سِنِينَ I remained in the service of the Prophet ﷺ for 10 years. He never told me once for something which I didn't do. Why did you do that? Or for something which I did. Why did you do that? To that level. Leave alone. And we hear a, a lot of, you know, uh, stories of teachers of old times, you know, with the stick and yelling and shouting and screaming. Alright, who's the best mu'allim? Who is that role model of what a mu'allim should be? What a teacher should be? Is Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Why don't we follow his sunnah in this? Who is the Prophet alayhi wa sallam? He was a father as well. 
Who was the Prophet ﷺ? He was a leader as well. Alright? But look at his akhlaq. Look at his character. To who? A 10 year old child. Alright? A 10 year old child. Alright? This was his character with him. Sometimes we look at little kids and we, and we want, alright, just get out of here. You know, get far away from here. Why are you making noise? You know, we want them, they're annoying. But here's the Prophet ﷺ. At 10 years, he says. Maybe I did something wrong and the Prophet ﷺ never told me even, he never told me off even. You know, why did you do that? Why did you do that? That again, this is an example of the akhlaq of the Prophet ﷺ. With a small child, yet he had the entire world to look after. Yet he kept his cool with that small child. So Anas ibn Malik, and we're coming back to that hadith. Anas ibn Malik radiallahu anh, he reports and he says that once the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he was in the, in the mosque with some of his companions. He's talking with them. They're talking with him. A Bedouin comes in. Bedouin from the village. Someone from out of town. Medina was a town. All right? The people in it, and we know this, people in towns are generally more advanced. All right? People from the desert, people from the bush, people from out of town, people from... Villages are, are, are slightly less than that. So this man's character, his ways, his habits was different. So he came in the masjid of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He went to a corner and he started to urinate. He went to the toilet in the mosque. Now imagine if that happened in our times. How crazy we would go. Everyone would go crazy. Ah, oh, stuff for Allah, what's this person? And we'd get up and we'd get angry. You know what? The companions, they did the same. Because they had the same sentiment. Alright, what's wrong with this person who just came and he's urinating, going to the toilet in the house of Allah? And the people became angry. But the Prophet ﷺ, who was right there, right, he said, Da'u, leave him. Alright, leave him. Don't interrupt him. And he's right, the Prophet ﷺ, look at his mercy, look at his understanding, look at his hikmah, his wisdom. Because he knew that. You can't stop a person midway. A person is urinating. You can't tell them, hey, stop. It's impossible. It's painful. It's harmful as well to that person. So the Prophet ﷺ, leave. Alright? And so the man he finished his pieces in the corner. And then the Prophet ﷺ called him over. He didn't tell him, hey, hey come here. No, let me give you, let me teach you a lesson. Go clean up your mess. No, not even that. The Prophet ﷺ told his companions. Alright, not him, told his companions, take some buckets of water and go clean it up. Alright, and then he called the man. And then he spoke to him in such a loving manner. That hadha masjidullah, this, or hadha baytullah, this is the house of Allah. Alright, that in the house of Allah, the house of Allah is for the worship of Allah, is for the remembrance of Allah. We don't do these things in the house of Allah. Such a loving and a kind way. This was Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam on the highest level of akhlaq. A very, very similar story happened with Muawiyah ibn, al ibn al Hakam al Sulami. He said, Now, we remember there was actually a time where people used to talk in salah. Right? People used to talk in salah. Before it was revealed that you can't talk in salah. There was actually a time that people used to talk in salah. So, salam wa they used to make salah and they used to be reading someone who's coming, Salaamu Alaikum, Wa Alaikum Salaam, and they used to carry on with Might seem strange to us nowadays, but remember, this was a time when everything was not complete. Afterwards, the law came that you cannot talk in salah. So, he says that I entered the mosque, I joined the salah, the Prophet ﷺ was obviously an imam over there, and a man sneezed. A man from amongst the congregation, they all prayed. A man sneezed, and I turned and looked at the man, Ya Alhamdulillah. I told him like that, May Allah have mercy on you. Alright? And then people started to like, become agitated. And I was looking at the man, I wanted a response from him. Hey, I said, Ya Alhamdulillah, Ya Alhamdulillah, Ya Alhamdulillah. Alright? And everyone around me started to like, you know, Pat started to slap, like as in, and, and he says, Muawiyah, that I actually spoke with the person, and I said, oh, what's wrong with you? What do I do? The same thing. After the salah, the Prophet he didn't do anything. Right? He says, Muawiyah ibn al-Hakam, he says that after the salah, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he called me, alright, and he sat me down and he explained to me, this is salah. 
in Salah you don't talk, you don't do this, you don't do that. In such a loving manner did the Prophet treat his people. You know, the Prophet in a nutshell, in a nutshell, the Prophet he told us as well, Yassiru wala tu'assir. Make things easy, don't make things hard. Bashiru wala tunafiru. Give good tidings, good news. Wala tunafiru. Don't turn people away. Nafra is hate. Don't turn people away from the religion. Alright? Often it happens, maybe because, yes, maybe alhamdulillah we have that iman, we have that worry when we tell someone off. Alright, when we, when we want to tell someone about the religion, we tell them in such a harsh way that it, it breaks them and it turns them off. You know, I'll give you one s small thing. There was a river brother, he just accepted Islam, a Chinese brother. And he was with us and we went out slaughtering. You know, it was Eid al-Adha time. And he was there slaughtering. And, and like, just a Muslim, just became Muslim. He had a haircut, you know, like a shaven haircut, big hair on the top shaven. We, we know the Prophet, ﷺ, he forbade us from those types of haircuts. So one of the brothers there, mashallah, he immediately just pointed to him and he said, hey, that haircut is haram. Just like that, that haircut is haram. And this poor river brother who's my friend, still alhamdulillah, very strong on Islam, he became so small and so worried and so, and I went and talked to the brother and he said, no, I know, I've studied sharia. And I said, you're 100% right. You are right, you have studied sharia. Your ruling is right. That type of haircut is not, but understand this brother has just come into Islam, learning the basics of Islam. Let's deal with hikmah and with wisdom. This is how the Prophet wasallam would be. I'm going to end very shortly. The Prophet wasallam, we said that was his akhlaq, that was his character. On himself. So you can see from that how lenient he was with people. When he dealt with people, he was very lenient. He wanted to bring them close. When he came to his own self, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he would stand up in night, subhanallah, Umm Salma, one of the wives of the Prophet, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, she got up one night and she looked for the Prophet. You know, the Prophet, when he went to bed, he was there next to her. And then she woke up and now he's not there. And she went and she looked around, where is the Messenger of Allah? And she found the Prophet ﷺ, he was standing with his hands raised and he was crying and crying and he was saying, he, he was making such dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Oh Allah, don't take away the good that you have given me. Don't please my enemies who are jealous of me. Don't allow their evil from which you save me to come back to me. Don't leave me to myself even for one moment. He's making this dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And he pleads to Allah and he's crying. This is a messenger of Allah. Afterwards she comes and, and, and she comes and she says, Oh Messenger of Allah, why, why are you putting yourself through this? Aren't you the messenger of Allah? Hasn't Allah forgiven all of your past, present and future sins? Why are you doing this? It's like you, you, you're pleading with Allah, you're crying, your, your, your cheeks are wet. And then the Prophet ﷺ says, أَفَلَا أَكُونَ عَبْدًا شَكُورًا Should I not be a grateful servant of Allah? This is the taqwa of the Prophet ﷺ on this other hand. On another occasion, the Prophet ﷺ, his feet would swell up. He was swollen. Swollen from the amount he would stand up in Salah, worshipping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We can go on and on and on and speak about the taqwa of the Prophet Another one of his, Aisha radiallahu anha, she says that moons would pass over the house of Rasulullah and the only thing to eat in the house of Rasulullah was aswadain, the two dark things. That is what? Dates and water. And the water would appear dark because it would be in those mud uh, uh, containers. This was the taqwa of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa This was his level. Yet he took that on one hand and he took his high character and he was able to draw Islam towards people. Brothers and sisters in Islam, the purpose today was to remind myself firstly and to remind everyone else that there is no better role model for us than Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. 
There is no one who is on a higher level of taqwa than Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So yes, we might be, be harsh on ourselves when it comes to Islam, but on others, follow what the Prophet alayhi salam has told me. Yassir, bashir, give good news to them, tell them nice things. If they come and tell you of something that they've done, give them something nice. Don't tell them, yes, you're going to the hellfire, you've done really bad. Give them a nice word. Make things easy on them. Don't make things hard for them. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that He grant us all the tawfiq, the guidance, the hidayah to put into practice what has been said here today. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that he, he genuinely puts into us the love of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. We look at him as our role model and our guide in life. And we learn every aspect of his life. And we ask you Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala on the day of judgment, you raise up, up, you raise up, raise us up with him and his companions and you grant us his intercession and you make us enter into Jannah with him and his companions. وآخر دعوانا أن الحمد لله رب العالمين